And let's go ahead and start. <clears throat> uh, it is just a hair before 2 o'clock, but I'm just so excited I can't help myself. This is the Unhindered by Coding live stream. This is Nick McPhee. Um, episode 53. Hard to imagine, but here we are. Um, and the second session of the day. First session was really productive, so thank you to all the folks that participated in that. Um... This afternoon's session is going to be finishing something that was finished already. Yeah, something like that. So we had pretty much wrapped up the um, segmented file system uh, client. And uh, last week, yeah, I guess it must have been last week, um, but looking at it, the air handling's not great, and I would like to actually do better there. Um, and there was a suggestion. So we used uh, the air stack crate on a previous project in this session, um, maybe two months ago, when we were working on the Echo client server, uh, the server part of the Echo system. We used the air stack crate. Which was good, but a little cumbersome's probably hello is it too? Cumbersome's probably the wrong word. I wouldn't say that Aristec was cumbersome, but it did require a lot of stuff. And it was suggested by someone, might have been as it's I don't honestly remember, to try the anyhow crate instead. So I thought, well, you know, why don't we do that? Why don't we take this opportunity since the air handling on this Segmented file transfer client isn't great. So it was you, yes. Um, well, then it's awesome that you're here. We'll get to see it happen. Um, uh, we're going to try that. See if we can improve the error handling um, and I'll try a different crate. Um, a different way of doing error handling in Rust. So that's what I'm going to do today. And it'll be fun and exciting and we'll see how things go. So um, let's see... Uh, well, hello, Agatha. Wonderful to see you again as well. Um, so what do we have here? Oops. Let's see. Let's make you go away. Oh, and I didn't... Ah! I forgot to zoom in so that the words are big and you can read them on the screen. There we go. That's probably pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a system that does, in fact... Uh, successfully connect. Um, uh, meh, 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 to the server and downloads in the um, uh, downloads in some amount of time, some four hundred and something packets, I think, from a UDP server and assembles them into. Um, uh, the files and it works, um, but it has some issues. And is it to? I think you're being generous. I don't, because there are at least four unwraps or expects just hanging out in space that Clippy's all like Meh, about. And there's a lot of question marks that don't have any um, context associated with them. And I do kind of like the idea of context. Um, so, so this, we now have the, um, the files as you like it and binary.jpg and small.txt. Those weren't there before. Um, and those have been downloaded and properly assembled. So Shakespeare's play, etc. cetera. Um, so remove those. Um, so if we, be, 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 where would we want to look at things? So packet group, for example, there's um, an unwrap. There's an unwrap here and here and two expects um, in writing to the file. So we basically just kind of die here. Um, and we don't capture much. Um, although I guess we do in the expect at least have some messages. Um, and then there's 
also um, just a lot of question marks floating around. Um, I think in uh, lots of places, File Manager, I think, has. Um, so there's question marks uh, floating around here about things that could die. And then maybe it's main. Does main have? And then there's a bunch of question marks in main that we're just, you know, not doing anything very exciting with. Um, uh, and so it's possible that you missed a stream. I don't know. Um, and so I feel like this isn't awesome. And in particular, I don't know that these um, unwraps and expects are great. Um, and so I was like, man, eh, I feel like maybe we want to do something. Well, I think the bit that you're remembering is we did have, back when we were parsing the packets, we have this packet parse error that handles that particular bit of the error handling universe. So we've got either an incomplete packet or a file name parse error. Um, and uh, most of our packet parsing uh, returns a packet parse error of uh, some sort. Um, and we have, yeah, so for example, if we try to parse uh, UTF-8, oh, this just maps a UTF-8 error to a packet parse error. Um, if we try to parse uh, our uh, header packet, if there's not enough bytes, we return an incomplete packet. And when we try to parse the uh, appropriate set of bytes, the slice here, to a string, implicitly that's going to generate a UTF-8 error, which we will confirm to a packet parse error so that this question mark can return a uh, packet parse error uh, if this fails. Um, so I think this is probably the part that you're remembering is it too. And I thought this actually worked fine. Um, but I'm a little, I think that then as I went forward, I got less careful about these things and um, there's more just like, uh, things didn't work. I don't care. Um, and being able to attach context to things seems to make sense. So like if this fails, it would be nice to capture the context that we tried the, um, uh, address that we tried to bind to, um, and report that back to the users. So they know what happened um, if this failed uh, where right now let's actually have a look if we um, uh, if we do if we start the thing again here and we also start it here at the same time so this fails we get an IO error, code 48, kind adder in use, and the message adder, address already in use. Um, so we don't get much that's useful from this. We just get, well, that didn't work. Um, and it would be nice to include like, hey, what address did we try to bind to? Um, uh, so that as a user, I'd have a little more information. Um, so. Zitsu, you say you personally manually add all the boilerplate to create your own errors. Um, uh, so, like, you would... Are you saying that you would have, like, a, 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 a UDP bind error that you would make and that it would then have this information? Or that you... Because I think, if I understand anyhow... Let's see, that is not the right window. Come on, where are you? Where, what, what happened here? You, 
Did I close a window I wasn't supposed to? I might have. Well, that's weird. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, can I restore something? Uh, yeah. No, I didn't. I don't know what happened. Okay. Uh, so, Rust, anyhow. Blah, 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 go back here. Um, and then, I mean, it seemed like one of the things that anyhow does that's nice, potentially, is that you don't end up making a bunch of error types. You can just attach context onto existing error types. And as long as your things return anyhow results, then like to take the uh, this example, we don't have to make a new type. If we just return anyhow's error type, we can just attach a context to this that says, hey, this failed for this reason. And then we would get some more information as a user. Um, uh, now, uh, and I do have client error. So I do separate out IO error and packet parse error. And then the from automatic, so this is an IO error and the from automatically converts that to a client error. Um, so we are doing that part. I feel like it's the context part that would be useful. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm understanding your comment as being your in favor of going down that road and using anyhow, or if you just feel like we should sort of attach more information to these things and get them to display more interestingly than they do right now. So I'm not quite sure what the suggestion is. Um, mm, yeah. You do lose the ability to match on the error type. And I guess one thing I don't know is I, it seems like I would guess that the anyhow error must wrap your own error. Like it must contain your own error. And so if you needed to actually match on your error, you could get the anyhow error and ask it for the in interior error I would get but I'm just guessing there I really don't know if that's actually possible um, uh, like can we get um, well, that's not helpful um, what is this functions hmm I don't know if this, um, there was a downcast ref. Yes, I remember seeing that. Um, and I don't know, they talk about downcasting here. Oh, so is downcasting just getting your error out? Oh, I don't think I'd understood that that's what downcasting was doing. Um, so I guess the idea here is that root cause must be well I wonder if that's the that's the interior piece of the error um, hmm but it this does look like we are pattern matching against some error that triggered something and so if you wanted to do matching it does look like you can do this I've never done it so um, so I don't know. I figure let's give it a shot. Um, uh, oh, if you have multiple errors and you have to ask it for each one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how that plays out. And I don't know if we're going to care. Like, are we going to need to pattern match against an error anywhere? Or can we just do it all in... 
our error types and any house contacts. So I figure, oh, let's give it a shot. I mean, worst that happens, um, yeah, so maybe we don't care. Um, and it's in a branch. I made a branch for this. And so worst thing that happens is it's just a mess. And we like ignore that branch. Um, no, no. Um, yeah, so that, well, so actually this error is here because, so it's a fair question. Um, this error is here because they say here that you can't derive error for your uh, for your own error types, but that you could just use this error. So now I guess maybe then another possibility is to use this error and not use anyhow, um, uh, which I have not actually looked into. Um, uh, so this error clearly creates messaging, which looks interesting, um, but it doesn't seem to create context. Like, I don't know uh, context. Yeah. I don't know that there, and, and Future Highway, definitely correct me if, if uh, I'm wrong, because I've not really looked into this. I, I looked into it enough to go, oh, I can drive things. Um, but I don't know, like, I don't know if I can hear, like, just add a context that says, hey, this is, we tried to bind and we tried to bind to this thing. Um, uh, that, and that would be nice. And that's the thing that anyhow will do for us or the uh, air state, air stack crate. But that was, I think, a little heavyweight. Um, so um, the, this error, I think, may be useful, especially for the driving um, aspect of it, because uh, I could do kind of like this in places where um, that would be useful. But that's this seems to be the thing when I'm making my own error types, as opposed to uh, here where we're getting an error from something else. Um, like, I don't know how we would, uh, attach some kind of context to this, to the error that can come from binding using this error's annotation mechanism. Um, because I don't know how... Um, yeah. And, and at this level, we don't know what socket was being bound to that sort of buried down in UDP socket bind code. So, so I feel like we could do something like, um, make sure I'm doing this right. Um, so we just need uh dot context yeah um so like here we could say dot context and um fail to bind to address blur blur um oh i guess it would help to pull this address out into a Adder, you know, bow, um, adder. And, uh, oh, yeah, right. This is going to totally fail because we don't, we're not returning the right. Um, if you wanted context, you can add a string for context as you control the error. Um, not sure i understand what oh i forgot to put adder back, back in here that would help not sure i understand what that means um now this fails because io error isn't 
Oh, I see. Oh, um, oh, that's because we're returning the wrong kind of result here. So this is going to have to be changed um, to be the. Uh, so, for example, in client error, IO error. So that's right here. Uh, you could add a string and put your context in it if you really want. Yes. So we could have a message here. Um, and then we, when we, well, okay. So we can put a message there. Great. I agree with that. But then that means the, we have to have the message here and we don't because, um, you know, we basically want to go here, but we don't have the message. We have the error that comes from the bind, but the bind doesn't include that error. The std IO error doesn't include this information. Um, I mean, maybe it does way down in the bowels of the air. I could go digging around, but I don't really want to have to like write code that depends on the internal representations of these errors. So I don't think I can put this message in here because I don't think I have the information I need. Um, oh, well, that would be a possibility. Um, then you'd have to capture the result and then match on it and update things. Um, and then future highways got to go do some laundry, but shared a link. Always fine to have a link. Let me have a look at that quick. Come on. Boom, boom, boom. And Yeah, so, right, so this is um, the kind of thing I was thinking of. Uh, question is, I don't know how you make some of these things if you don't have that information at that moment. Um, so this new connection generates a network error, which has presumably stuff. Oh yeah, it's one of these. Um, so lots of things that generate network errors. Um, but I don't know how to get the piece of information I need from Yeah, I mean, I get that there are clearly fields here, but I don't know how to fill, if I go back to the code, and maybe I'm just missing something, it's entirely possible. It seems to me that when this gets created, I don't have the information that I want. As Izitsu points out, I could make things an option and wait and fill it in, but that just seems kind of gross. Um, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to just roll with anyhow for now. Well, let's see if we can make this work. Um, and then I will know things, even if we I don't like it in the end, I'll know things I didn't know when I got up this morning. And that's a useful thing. Um, okay, so, so this fails because this is no longer the right thing. So this really needs to be anyhow error. Boom. And now we can, so it did pull that in. Did it pull that in? Uh, no, didn't seem to. Um, okay, maybe it didn't need to. Um, if the trait is, oh, I do need to import something. There we go. Yeah. I figured I had to import something somewhere. Um, now, why are we grumpy? 
oh, I actually apparently have to format bang if I want to uh, build more interesting messages. Okay, there we go. So that actually, but when I want my message to go away, because that's not happening. Um, and why are you? Oh, it's because I left the string in there. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that would, in theory, now things aren't going to work because I've got a, a compilation issue on line 47. Really? Uh, interesting. So... Bacon tells me there's a compiler, a compile problem here, but VS Code seems to be unaware of it. So, yep, yeah, enjoy your laundry. See you in a sec. Um, uh, yes, agreed. Um, yes. I think that's a that's a good point. Is that that's probably what we want here, um, and we got to make sure that we get the right anyhow now or the right result. So this we need to use anyhow result and okay. So that now compiles. Um, <laughs> um, yes, we'll have to find out what I like better. Um, so, I mean, this is a fair question because the word result is used in so many places. There is something nice about making it clear that you're using a result from... Uh, but maybe maybe really what I want is this, so that it's totally clear, um, yeah, that uh, we're using the one from anyhow. Um, because it is, I think there are so many result things going around. Um, uh, that being clear about which result you're using uh, doesn't seem to be a terrible thing. And especially maybe on something like main, like if people read code from kind of the top down, read main and then use that to figure out what to read next, which frankly, I don't think very many people do. But if that happened, um, if you thought of this as being a document where this is kind of the, the introductory paragraph, saying in the introductory paragraph that, and by the way, we're going to use anyhow here and not the standard library result kind of makes sense to me as a like flag that. And then whether you repeat that over and over again through the rest of the code, well, I don't know, that's maybe less clear. Um, but I do kind of like the idea that you would say up front, by the way, where and you could argue that the you statement up here is saying that, but I think people are a lot more likely to read this than they are to read the you statements. Um, so, so I'll, I'm going to do that. We'll we'll do this here for now. We'll see where we go from there. So now this, well, does this really compile? Um, or no, VS Code is just confused. Um, so yeah, the question mark on line 48 is returning a, a standard error error and not um, a, so that's this guy here. That question mark gets us in trouble because we don't have a, um,
Is it just because we don't assign any context to it? Um, uh, yeah, well, I could, but if I use the, I could impl error, but I think if I use the this error derive, I get impl error for free plus some other stuff. So, eh, um, I think that could go either way. So yeah, I think this is um, actually, I'm not sure. So what's the error again? So try into the sta trait standard error, error is not implemented. Oh, so this is what you were saying actually, is that we don't, ah, right. Because packet parse error doesn't implement error. So anyhow, doesn't know how to convert it into one of their result types. So I'm going to have to do that. So that's over in packets. Uh, and so our packet parse error, we need to derive error if we're using any uh, this error. Uh, and then we have to put these um, hash error messagey things. Um, and I'm going to start with something simple, and then we can come back to something more interesting. Because um, I think one thing that this points out is this doesn't have any associated information, um, and maybe it should or could. Um, Uh, data to file name. Uh, like here, you could imagine actually having the byte array um, that didn't parse correctly. And here you could imagine having how many uh, bytes the um, packet had. Um, uh, and whether you were trying to parse it as a data packet or a header packet. So I can imagine some more information here um, might be a useful thing. Um, and well, that didn't, oh, we probably have to import a whole bunch of things. Oh, come on. Uh, import error from this error. And now everything compiles. And so now, in theory, if we were to run our thing again, and at the same time, let's make sure it actually compiles. Over here, oops, oh no, that's, I wanted that one to stay alive. Ah, poop, that's probably gonna break everything. So let's run that one, and over here, I did it again. I was in the wrong tab. Okay, kill that, start that again. Go here, start that again. Ah, and now we get, I think, a more useful error message. Instead of having just this, we get error failed to bind to address blah, caused by address already in use. I mean, I definitely think that is an improvement on that. I think that's a win. Um, and so I think that, um, on its own has made things better. Um, and so I think that sort of pressing through and trying to improve the messaging around, um, the different places that, uh, generate question marks and et cetera would be a good thing. Um, so. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to call this a, a good thing so far. Um, so let's see here. I want to dot context. Um, and here this fails. If we failed to connect, failed to connect to address. Remote adder. Okay. 
And now that should come up if we don't have the server running. So if I kill the server and rerun this, boom. No, it did not come up there. That's interesting. Connection refused, error 61. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I'm curious. Does this just not fail? Oh, blah, blah, blah. guessing it didn't fail. Um, uh, oh, actually, Clippy's not saying anything about with context. Oh, I, but I see you're, you're suggesting that we want with context because we don't want to actually make this function call unless we have to, um, that makes sense. Okay. So let's, we'll fix that. Um, but I just want to see, we got past connect. So actually, even though the server's not running, this connect didn't fail. It's like it didn't realize there was an issue yet. Hmm. Well, I assume it'll figure it out at some point, so I'll not worry about that. Um, and then, but let's do your with context idea. So with context takes a closure of no arguments and then does the work. So that uh, makes more sense because we don't want to spend the energy to um, generate that format statement unless we have to. Okay, so that's good. And then we have this question mark here. Um, with context format. Ooh, I don't know that I have to actually, I don't need format here. So I think I can just say context on this one because I think this is just a string um, failed to send the initial connection message. Well, actually, Maybe I do want that because that would be potentially useful there with context, format, bang, and close print. And what have I done? Uh, oh, I've got the question mark in the wrong place. Question mark goes there. La, la, la. Uh, oh, I forgot the closure, no arguments part. Okay. So now, does it fail when we send the initial message? No, not yet. Really? Huh. Well, UDP is pretty um, stupid, a strong word, um, but it doesn't tell you when things, it, it allows a lot of things to happen that TCP would prevent or yell, yell about. So maybe it's just that UDP is like, yeah, if you send a thing, we don't bother checking or caring if it actually went anywhere so that really we're not going to know there's a problem until we try to receive a packet and then something bad happens. I don't know. We will keep pressing on. Um, so we have an await here. Uh, so let's see dot with context. 
Format bang failed to receive a packet from remote address. Remote adder. Boom. Bop. Why are we fussing? Um, why are we fussing? Oh, the closure body. I'm missing the close brand. Boom. That will work better. Um, now do we get an error? Failed to receive a packet from remote address, blah, 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 blah. That's really interesting that until we actually attempt to receive a packet, we do not get an error. So the attempt to connect succeeds and sending our hello, we would like stuff message succeeds. Um, and it's not until we try to get a packet back. Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Let's see. Pro I'm guessing not, maybe? Um, so sock.ready, what does that do? Um, So we call sock.ready, we get a ready back, and then we can do things like is readable. Okay. Um, so let's grab that. Boom. So we're interested in, really all we're interested in is readable. Uh, well, we are gonna send this message to it. So I guess we're interested in writable. Um, so then if we care with connect format failed to well i think actually we could say failed to connect to at remote address and then see if that and it's sock, not socket. And we'll have to import these things. Those Tokyo things? That's a Tokyo socket, so yeah, I guess so. Um, and why is with connect being crabby? Oh, because that's a Tokyo. No. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, too much programming. Not enough sleep. Okay. So now this might fail. Yeah, this might fail more promptly. No, failed to receive a packet that's from later on. So that's down here. So this did not. Oh, I didn't actually check the result though. I wonder if I need to check. Um, yeah, so I can ask if it's readable or if it's writable, um, let's just ask if ready dot is readable. Um, actually, let's say if not is readable. Um, actually, uh, we could just assert bang, skip the whole. Assert that it's readable assert that it's writable uh, 
and then at least we know where it fails. Um, so let's try that. See if either of those fail. Aha! Yeah, so readable failed. And if we start the, nope, not that one. If we start the server. Oh, hello. You're running. Uh, uh, that's interesting. Hmm. That's weird. So maybe I need the uh, wait waiting versions that you mentioned. Ready dot is hmm. Oh, I see. Sock writable and sock readable await. Okay. So what is sock dot writable returns a IO result. Aha. Uh -huh. So we could just say dot await dot with context format can't write to the remote address remote adder you know, you know, boom, boom and then we have basically the same thing for readable all of which I'll probably remove because we don't really want to be texting this in general but I'm curious from the remote address. La 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 la. Run. And hello. So the server's not running, and this appears to be hanging. So I'm kind of guessing this await here is suspending indefinitely. Um, and instead of getting an error, we are hanging. If I start the server, will it kick loose? No, probably can't recognize that the server's running. Oh, and actually, let me get rid of this. Uh, let's make sure that that wasn't interfering. Let's see, I think the server's running now. Yes. So does this work? Da -da 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 -da. No. We are not getting anywhere. Which makes me think these things are a problem. If I comment them out. Um, yeah, now it runs. So somehow asking about writable and awaiting. Uh, doesn't seem to return. One of these doesn't return. Um, If I bring out the first one, oh, so writable succeeded. That's interesting. But if I kill the server, does writable succeed? No. But we got failed to receive a packet. That happens later. So this succeeded. And this succeeded, but that 
failed. Whereas if we bring this back in, we hang. Well, that's odd. And I don't know that I care a lot. I mean, I'm not overly worried about the order of events here. Like the fact that this, we don't get this message, but we get this message down here doesn't really bug me too much. It's a little odd, but it's not, I think, end of the world odd. So I think I'm just going to press on, get rid of this, and um, we at least have, I think, a reasonable error message when this um, fails. Oops. Uh, so if we kill this, oh, the server is dead. So this should at least give us fail to receive a packet from the remote address. Um, I mean, we could add um, is the server running? Um, now, can I add? Can I call with context multiple times? Could I say context, boom, boom, and get uh, both of those messages? No. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So I got this message and then this got pushed down into the cause by stack, which is probably not really what I wanted. So I think I'll go back to the semicolon version of things. Um, yeah. Okay. That'll do. And then, uh, um, so that seems reasonable. Then we have this. So that's trying to parse into a packet. And so that would be if we have a bad packet. Um, now, I don't know if we need, well, doesn't hurt, probably. Um, dot with context. Um, format bang. Failed to parse packet. Buff dot dot len. Now, do I think that's a useful thing to add there? Oops, one F. Oh, it's with context, so I need the two thing. Oh, come on, the two thingies. That's better. Doesn't like this. Uh, oh. So it can't. Because it doesn't have a known size. I can't include it here um, at an ampersand 
and then it will print. Oh, okay. That's cool. Sure. So we pass a reference which has a known size and then debug will do the right thing when it gets to the other side. Presumably we would need debug display. Presumably won't work. Yeah. Um, so, okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, is it to appreciate that? Um, now the question is, does that message make sense there? Or does that message make more sense in the packet parsing? Um, I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. We'll be overly enthusiastic about our error handling for now. And we'll um, uh, tidy. We can remove stuff later. Um, I don't know that I... Well... Because I think uh, failed to flush connection with do do bop beep remote adder beep boop boop. Oops, I got too many. I don't need an open print there. Probably never see that message. Um, I don't even know how to encourage that message to happen. Um, and then um, with context, format bang. Uh, failed to write. Downloaded file. Write files downloaded from to disk. Remote editor. Boom. You can provide more information there, but I think we'll get more when we're inside write all files. Um. And I think we can force this one because I think if I start the server and if I make one of the files not writable by anybody, then I think we will fail. Oh yeah, we got to go through the whole download though to see that happen. That's mildly annoying, but we'll live. Um, I'm not sure the error message makes sense for flush. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's on standard out. Oh, that's because of my dots. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is completely unrelated to remote address. Thank you. Good catch. Um... Wow, so this is really just context. And fr frankly, I don't even know what it would mean for this to fail. Fail to flush standard out. Yeah, no idea what that would mean. Um, so good catch on your part. Um, I don't know how we would even, where how we would ever see that. Um, but here we did get failed to write files downloaded. It helps if I have. And really, do we care about where they were downloaded from? No, I don't think we do. Not for this error. So I think we could just get away with this. And that and that. Yeah, I think it'd be fine. Um, so fail to fight write files uh, to disk. And then we'll presumably have more concrete information in. Um, we can add more specific context inside of write all files that will do something more useful. So, okay. 
So I think that actually adds fairly useful, moderately useful, I guess. Like, really? I don't know what this is ever going to tell us. Um, uh, uh, I wonder if you, if you tried to pipe or I.O. redirect to something. Well, maybe. Um, let's uh, touch unwritable.txt to mod a minus w unwritable. And now if we run this and we send the output to unwritable. Oh, I think the OS is going to fuss. Yeah. The OS actually noticed it too fast. So I don't know that we can actually make that work. Okay. Unwritable. Yes. Um, so I don't know how, how we would see this. Um, I'm sure we could invent some complex environment where that might happen, but uh, it strikes me as way more work than it's worth at the moment. So, um, I'm going to commit this, and then we'll press into some of the other files and see what fun and excitement occurs. Um, okay, so this is... Oh, we need to remove those guys. I, yeah, we don't really want them. Uh, okay, so those are adding... Anyhow, in this error, um, add anyhow, and this error, great dependencies, boom, um, packet, uh, we had to drive, uh, uh, drive error for packet parse error. This uses the this error crate to drive the error trait for our packet parse error type. Um, blah, 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 two. and then here we add context to actually it's a clippy warning. What is that clippy warning? It's new. Um, oh, there's an imp, an import we didn't need on main. Wah, wah, wah. Oh yeah, we got rid of the whole business with interest. Um. Good catch. Um, so add um, anyhow context messages to all the uh, in main. As an <coughs> excuse me, anyhow, context message to every question mark in main. Uh, not all of them make a ton of sense. Um, for example, on IO stood out. Lush, uh, but there, there, boom. Okay. Now, now that takes care of main. So now main calls lots of things. Uh, so let's look at what gets called. So bind, that's not ours. We don't worry about it. Um, Connect is an ours. We don't worry about it. Send is an ours. We don't worry about it. 
receive is an ours we don't worry about it this try into that's ours so the packet parsing flush isn't ours and write all files is ours um actually i'm going to do write all files because i think there is clearly some Something interesting going on there and then we'll come back and look at the packet business um, well that's so much a test that's what's going on there uh, write all files um, so that returns an IO result and we actually want it to return an anyhow result presumably um, and so for each packet group we are going to call write file and we have a potential failure so with context bang bang uh, format bang failed to write file for Packet group boop bop boop boop and packet group dot file name. That seems like a useful thing. So we tried to write the packet group. Uh, for that and we did not get there let's see why are we string option oh right so that might not have a file name yet and that could be the reason for the failure um hmm, that's interesting uh mm hmm Well, let's boom, boom, boom. Uh, boom. And then we'll have to see if there is a file name there. So we're going to have a match. Match gonna make the most sense? Probably the simplest. Um, no, no, an if let if let um, some file name equals packet group dot file name. Then do that. Otherwise, do something else. And the that is this. This is going to need to have, this will have the question mark here, not there. And that's going to be too many parens. Otherwise, um, hmm. I think we should have the file ID, maybe? Um, no, maybe not. Uh, we probably don't, because that's actually in this map. And the packet group doesn't know its own file ID. All right, packet group. has a file name, an expected number of packets, and a packet map. Yeah, so unless we change this to be an iterator over key value pairs, we won't know the file ID here. Interesting. 
Well, maybe that's what we ought to do, is map over key value pairs. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, map. Uh, can we do that directly, or do we have to... Uh, Keys, values, eh, maybe we can't. Maybe we have to just go over keys and then get them out. Is that true? Ah, for KV, so packet, um, so for file ID and packet group in self.map. Oh, oh, nice. Good job. Thank you, Agatha. So then... Uh, this will be file ID. And this needs to not return. It needs to be a value. And this is grumpy. Oh, right, it's just a uh, file name. Because we've done the if let, so we don't need that. Uh, and we're grumpy because... Oh, because I named it. Okay. And then with context is grumpy... Uh... Oh, I bet I have to import anyhow context. Yes. Uh, and why are you grumpy? Uh huh. So if I just do an ampersand. Okay. Now, consider borrowing here. That'll be fine. I don't need to own. There we go. Awesome. So, with file ID and file name, and we'll go ahead and Put file ID in there as well. Um, and that, in theory, should give us something useful. And I think we can force the, I think we can force this one by just making the file not writable. Um, I don't know a good way to force this without modifying the server to not send the right collection of packets. So I don't know that we'll be able to see this error happen, but we can see this error happen, I think. Wah, wah, wah. Um, yeah, it's fine. It, we got there. Um, so let's see. Kill that. Try running it. Oh, no, we actually want it. Um, so we want to touch as you like it. Jamad A minus W as you like it. Make sure that the server is running and run this puppy. Yeah, we don't want that nonsense. Boom. And now with a little luck, oh, we've got a unused import. When we get to the end here, this will fail in the writing and we will get a useful message about that. Do 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 so there are four rows full rows of dots and about a half row on line five if that helps you sort of assess how tedious this wait is. Um, 
And I think there's actually a delay built into the server in the sending of the packets <clears throat> to try to avoid overloading networks and clients. Aha! So failed to write files to disk caused by failed to write file for packet group with file ID 2 and file name as you like it. Permission denied. Cool. Um, and that probably ought to have quotes around it just to be super obsessive. Um, but I think that is pretty nifty. I can live with that. Um, and so then if we go into packet group write file, uh, write file, write file, here we go. Um, so there's a pile of question marks. Oh, this is where all the unwraps and expects are. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay. So we want this to return an anyhow result, which will fail to compile because, oh no, we've already imported an anyhow result, so it should, it should be okay. Now, file, create. Um, so file name as ref. Oh, file name is an option. Gotcha. So if this, so this could fail, um, and that's where that unwrap is. And the create could also fail, which is a different problem. So the highlighted in blue is if we don't have a file name yet. And the question mark is if we couldn't create the file. And that's where a permissions problem would kick in. So really, I probably want to get the file name. Uh, out here. And this is what I want to change that unwrap into a question mark. And I want to add a context that will, why are you grumpy? Um, Oh, question mark only works on results, not on options. So we have to convert our option to a result. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna... Um, and as ref takes an uh, reference to an option and turns it into an option to a reference. And so that's, we're trying to get a reference to string here. And then there's, um, was it or that turned An option into a reference? No. Um, well, we just saw this in the morning stream. Rust convert option to result. Uh, okay, that's right. Okay, or, and then we say what kind of error we want. Um, Oh, that's interesting. So we actually have to have an error here. Um, and anyhow, I think let's us just spin up an error cold if we need one. Yeah. So we could do this kind of thing. Um, 
And actually what we really want is that, I think. Yeah. So, boom. Uh, and that's going to need some kind of import, probably. Anyhow, anyhow. Uh, oh. I guess I thought use anyhow, anyhow. That made that better, yep. And so we need to change this to be useful. Um, missing file name in packet group with file ID. And oh, hey, packet groups don't know their ID. Um, so we don't, and if file name's missing, we don't really have any kind of marker to indicate what this is. I wonder if packet groups really ought to have their file ID in them. Because this is from a sort of error handling and debugging perspective, not, not knowing the file ID. It's kind of annoying and would be potentially useful. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to live with that. Oh, is Clippy mad at me? Clippy is mad up here. We don't need this. And Clippy is mad over in File Manager. We don't need that. And, ah, Clippy is mad. And I bet, oh, actually, Clippy, this is somewhere else. Um, so Clippy is suggesting OK or else over here in Packet Group, which I'm guessing is what you were anticipating. Um, And that takes a um, oh no yes yeah that takes a closure uh, instead of a so we don't actually do this macro call if we don't need to and there's also actually a grumpiness back over here in file manager line 41 uh, in my if let oh it really wants to go all full on wagafa at me um, so it says to um, uh, here let's actually Pull this error up. Card, oops, no, get out of there, over here. Um, oh, cargo clippy, that's what I wanted. So, yeah, here's the one. So instead of doing an if else, it says to do map or else with the two formats in separate closures, one of which has the file name. Um, <laughs> well, you said, I think in the previous stream that, you know, whenever you have to write an if statement, it kills you. Um, so, yeah. Um, hmm. Let's try it and see what it looks like. I may back away. Um, oh, that's an uh, interesting question. Will it be mad at me if I use a match instead of an if let? I don't know. Let's, we'll try all of the things. So let's comment this out. 
Try it with a match. Match. Um, and packet group dot file name. Uh, some file name. And then we would have this format here. Wow, wow, wow. Boom. Otherwise, we would have, I guess we could just say none, since there's really only the two options there. And we would have this. Boom. And so let's see. What is it? Clippy think now. Uh, Clippy thinks I can't spell. Actually, Clippy doesn't even get far enough to think I can't spell. And I need a comma. At the end of the arm. Okay, now things compile. And Clippy says, come on, hello. Uh, Clippy is happy with that. So Clippy thinks that a match here is okay, but an if else um, uh, instead. Huh. <laughs> and to be honest, I think I like that better than Clippy's initial recommendation um, with the uh, two closures. Do I really care? Yeah, I mean, I feel... Mm, I feel, I, I think from a readability standpoint, I actually like this the best. Now, I think I do want to write the other one, though, just because I want to look at it in a form that isn't um, uh, in a big clippy message. So if I grab all this, boom, 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 and we try this, and we'll format that out in a more appropriate way. Okay, it's a packet group. Oh, this was... Uh, yeah, this is the whole... This goes inside the context, right? So packet group file name as ref map or else and then we're going to want to put a you there and actually probably you there um and then is that it for uh for everybody yes So we'd say, if it failed, we will do this. If it succeeded, then we have the file name and we will do that. Yeah, I think that's not as readable, to be honest with you, as this match. Or frankly, the if lat, but I, I like the match. The match I think is nice, and it makes Clippy happy. Happy. Um, uh, I find having two closures here seems. I don't know. It seems to me there's like cognitive load here. Um, in the closures. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with match. And. 
that makes Clippy happy, and I think it, to me it seems pretty readable. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's got a style and a history, and you know that's fine. Um, and actually, it's it's cool having multiple people here that have different ways of thinking about things um, to. Uh, share different approaches because I wouldn't necessarily think about some of these ways of doing things and so seeing that there are multiple ways of getting the job done and thinking about the pros and cons of those um, I think is cool I think that's very useful so thank you both everybody all well so I'm going to actually nuke these two um <laughs> uh I will not comment. Um so that now takes care of that question mark that was in write all files. <clears throat> um and then <clears throat> uh Right file generates a question mark, so we got to chase that down. Oh, that's that's where we were, I think. Um, yeah, we were in right file over here, and we had dealt with this question mark, and we had some more question marks and unwraps and expects to deal with. Whew. Okay. Now, do I want to actually commit that or merge? Amend that into the previous commit. Um, this was just in the mains. So file manager. File manager could just be its own thing, couldn't it? So maybe I'll do that. Maybe we'll commit file manager. Um, add anyhow context to file manager right all files um, I think this adds context to all the potential sources of error in the file manager type boom boom ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And then we'll go back to packet manager or packet group. Um, okay, so packet group over there. So here, that is a different context. Um, so that's with context. Bob up. Format bang failed to create file boom boom file name boom should have a capital F and I probably want to have quote marks around the file name and I need another close paren and then that works, except it doesn't. Uh, with, oh, I need to import. Fine. I can do that. So now we should be able to see this again. Is our server running? It is. Um, and I think we have as you like it is not writable so we should get the failure after we go through all the four dots um, Dum bum 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 bum.
And we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. And... Hey! Failed to write files to disk. Caused by failed to write file for packet group with file ID 5 and name as you like it. Failed to create file as you like it. Permission denied. Awesome. So one could argue that line 0 and line 1 are a little redundant. And we probably don't need line 0. But I'm going to keep it all. So it'll all be good. Um, so we'll be happy about that. And now we have an unwrap that we don't want. Um, so this is similar to the file name. We could have somehow not gotten the expected number of packets resolved. So, um, number of packets equals this. Number of packets. This is going to look a lot like this, actually. So, number of packets is going to be self dot number of packets because that's an option. Uh, we don't need the as ref. So we want an OK or else. And then we don't want the unwrap, and we want to turn that into a question mark. And this is going to be anyhow bang. Um, uh, hadn't, um, didn't know the number of packets or packet group and I should be able actually since I'll know the name by now um, uh, was the last packet received and then file name That's a very long line. And I don't know how to force that again without having a server that deliberately generates certain kinds of errors. I don't know a good way to force that issue. Um, now, there's an interesting question about whether we should have a, a server, a, a, a version of the server that would do that. But we could also mock things. And we could write tests that just send incomplete packet sets. Because I do have a test, I think that's in File Manager. Uh, yeah, this test actually does attempt to send a full set of packets for at least one file. So we could write tests that check that these things do the right thing um but then you know we'd be testing these error messages and that's probably fragile and ah, i don't think that's a good idea so we will just assume that life is good um uh and that'll be fine so cool that works uh and we got rid of that unwrap and now we've got these two expects. So this is trying to uh, get the packet number. Why is that? Oh. So the packet number is. Oh. The number of packets. Yeah, so this is weird. And maybe somebody's going to have a good idea here. So what's what exactly is going on? What exactly is going on is that 
packet numbers are U16s. Expected number of packets can be one more than the largest packet number. So, and this came up, the testing, the, the um, property, the uh, quick check tests turned this up because um, I had missed it. So if we think about, uh, to simplify things, imagine we just have a uh, packet numbers are a U8. Then packet number values run from 0 to 255. But the number of packets can be 256. It's one more than the largest packet number. So you can't put expected number of packets in the same data type that holds the packet numbers. It's got to be a larger data type. And I just did U size because it was a thing. You could have done, you know, if the packet numbers are U16, we could have gone for like U32, which in some cases might be smaller, but you know, we're, we're looking at three packet groups. So three expected number of packets. So, you know, having a U64 is hardly a big deal, but this is then not the same size as the actual packet number. It's got to be some sort of bigger size. And then that's what gets us down here. This has to be, um, in this case, this is U size. So then packet number is U size. And so we end up try fromming it back into a U16. And I, I don't know a better way to do it, but it seems uh, annoying, frankly. Um, and if anybody watching has got some clever thought for how to avoid having to convert this back into a U16 when we know in some sense it has to be a U16, but there's no way for the compiler to know that um, because it doesn't know that that is always never bigger than one more than the largest U16. So, um, but I wonder if maybe then that should be an assertion. Maybe this should be really assert bang. Um, actually, what do we want? We, we want to assert it about the number of packets. Uh, assert bang number of pack number of packets is strictly less than well i guess we'd say less than or equal to u 16 max value um so we could check Ooh, didn't like that uh, oh. So, great. Dot into. Um, so we could assert that that is true. Uh, oh, but that's not true. It's actually plus one. Right. So the number of packets can be one more than the largest possible value. So, so I wonder if that actually really ought to be written this way and then it'll get the types right. Ah, stop it. Um, no. This, uh, oh, because it doesn't know what I want. this to be well it says it's a u size that's okay so do i have to turbo fish this guy um u 
U16 Max as U size. No, oh, okay. Okay, that worked. And, and actually, I kind of like this better. So we know exactly what we're converting. I think it probably amounts to the same thing. Um, and then, so then I think that if this fails, this is truly a programmer error and not a system error because we know um, I should have a message here. Um, number packet should be. Um, and should be less than or equal to U16 max. So I feel like if somehow number of packets it doesn't satisfy this, it's because we screwed it up in the programming, not because we got the wrong data. And so I think an expect here makes sense. I mean, this should never actually happen or this should never actually happen because of the assert. Um, it's sort of a, annoying that we have to try from every value in this loop, um, but I don't know a way to avoid that. Um, unless, Ooh, what if I what if we converted number of packets minus one into a u16 and made this an inclusive range then this could be u6 oh I like that I like that idea because then this will be u16 all the time and we get to avoid the try from business uh -huh. so we've asserted that this ought to work and so we can say let number of packets u16. Ooh, no, I need, I guess what I really want is max packet number. Um, max packet number. That will actually be u16. And that's going to be number of packets gets minus one and that will fail and now we're gonna have to this is where we have to do the try from or try into or yeah however you want to think about it um so we're gonna need to do that around this and then we're going to need to have the expect because right now we have a result. And so actually we can just steal this expect. Probably not actually, now that I think about it. Uh, dot expect. Uh, oh, well actually, I could just change this to be the maximum packet number should fit. And a U16. I got too many semicolons at the end of that, it looks like. Yep. And now we can say max packet number here. And it's three dots. Give this inclusive or not. Uh, Pretty sure I've seen inclusive ranges, Rust inclusive range. Uh, uh, oh, it's dot dot equal. Thank you. 
and we'll got, we got there faster than me. Um, dot dot equal. Boom. And now we don't have to have this line anymore. Ha ha! So instead of checking those over and over again, we just need to check them once. And that I think is good. And then I'm going to need to um, uh, the dot expect shouldn't ever happen here because of the previous assertion. And so allow, um, what's it called? Expect unused, or expect used, sorry. Allow, expect, clippy expect, expect used, boom. <laughs> so all good all good you're 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 just you know here volunteering your test. so it's all good however it plays out so now that's cool um i've got an unused import how did that end up getting imported who knows probably auto completed something i shouldn't have And now we just have one more expect to deal with. Okay. What time is it? Uh, oh, we got nine minutes. Maybe we can just finish this guy and call that a win. So, um, so here we try to find a packet. We fail to find it. Um, so that's going to be, uh, we want a context and a question mark actually on that. So dot, so really this is with context, uh, boom, boom, but format bang. Didn't find expected packet with number you know, bum boo packet number boom question mark and that got rid of that expect and Clippy is all green go Clippy and then we can add a context to this puppy. Uh, with context, do do format bang do do um, failed to write buffer to file um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, Boom, boom, file name, boom, boom, question mark. And probably you want to put file name for, for file. Uh, ba -doom, ba -ba -doo. Add file name to this message as well. Okay. I don't know how to force this without making the server do weird things or writing tests. Um, this, I don't know if this happens. Maybe, maybe this happens when the file is uh, unwritable. We'll find out. Do 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 Okay. If this all works, then 
I think we will have done everything except um, adding context over here in the packet parsing. Um, so we could potentially add context to some of the packet parsing stuff. Um, and that would be all that would be left. Um, but that's cool to know. Um, failed to write files to disk, failed to write file for packet, blah, blah, blah. Failed to create file. Yeah, so it was the creation that, that it blocked on. So we didn't get as far as trying to write a buffer because we failed on creation. Uh, up here, yeah. So we failed to create here, so we did. We never got down this far. So I don't know how to. I guess you could do something weird where you kind of limit the size of a file to be zero bytes, but allow it to be created. That is not the game I'm going to play right now. So I think I'm going to say we're done for today. And that was super fun. Um, I think so far, anyhow, has been pretty straightforward. And being, I mean, adding all these contexts is arguably kind of verbose. But in terms of actually providing useful error messages, if something weird happened, um, it's not that bad. Um, and we just sort of drop with context in all the places where something weird could happen. Um, and I, you know, all those places where something weird could happen are places where something weird could happen. And you probably want a message there. So I don't see that this is a big deal. And I do think this is probably less burdensome than the error stack approach. We had to create a lot of types there um to handle the context changes whereas here we get um you know this sort of stack of errors pretty nice without having to create a bunch of intermediate types which is probably what we'd end up doing if we use the error stack approach um so i think this is actually pretty good i like this um so i will commit and um, we'll call this good for now. Uh, I don't know. I might just do packets on my own because um, this seems pretty boilerplate-y. I guess the question would be if, like right now, there's no other information here, just these strings, and I could add additional information like I could make the packet have some information about what was going on and the parse file name parse error about what was going on which then could be part of the context messages um, but maybe I don't need that maybe I have what I need when I generate the context message um, like well, yeah, right. I have I have what I need here. I know what bytes I was trying to turn into a file name, and so maybe I don't need to like store them in the error. I just want to add them to the context. So I might try this on my own. I if it's not turns out to be boring, I will not uh, or straightforward. I will not bore you with it. Um, if something interesting happens, maybe we'll come back to it. Um, so a reminder that um, so Tuesday morning, I should still be streaming. Wow, I just said 8 to 10 a.m. That is not going to be when I'm up streaming um, on uh, probably the Evolutionary Computation Project. Um, unless there's some kind of breakthrough between now and Tuesday on 
the OAuth thing. Um, Wednesday is canceled. And I went into Twitch and did that um, uh, when between the two streams today because I will be traveling Wednesday to Wisconsin. Um, uh, not sure about next Saturday. Um, so that would be the 19th. Um, uh, May stream from my sisters or May cancel. So I might just take a couple of weeks of vacation from streaming and try to focus on uh, setting up some kind of a blog and writing up some of the things that I've learned in doing all of this. I've been doing a lot of streaming and trying to capture stuff for myself, but I think there's some you know blogging to be done um, and maybe some short videos on my normal YouTube channel shorter, like 15, 20 minutes, as opposed to two hours, um, that are a little more scripted and sort of planned out that try to capture some of the things that I've learned often from people like you, um, and get some of that written down and out there in some way. And, um, I might use, uh, the Thanksgiving break to see if I can move some of those uh, pieces around on the board because I'll be staying with my sister and she's going to go to work in the morning because she has a job um, and her husband has a job and I'm going to be sitting around and so it would be a good time to maybe try to make some of those other things happen. So I might take vacation for a couple of weeks and, from streaming and try to focus on some of these other things and get them started uh and then I can start to get feedback um, from folks about whether I'm explaining things well or understanding what's going on. So you're all awesome human beings. Well, Goffa, I hope you're if you've enjoyed your burger, burger, beer, um, and uh, uh, may you all have a fine weekend. Um, if I don't see you on Tuesday, hope to see you um, after I get back. Um, otherwise I hope to see people Tuesday morning. Um, thank you all. And I will talk to you later. Goodbye.